Hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is story about what if Naruto was in the Anbu. Part 4. If you guys enjoy this what if. And want to see part 5. Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Being forced to hold a henge for over a week that was half his size and do it while in an ornate kimono was not Naruto's idea of fun. Being carried on his teammates Genma's shoulders and eating snacks though. That was the most enjoyable pastime Naruto could partake in. You're getting crumbs in my hair, you blonde bastard. Genma griped. Oh. But I'm a brunette, Naruto pointed out snidely. Shut it. And quit eating your heavy enough already the senbon enthusiast whined. Though Naruto's henge could alter his shape, it didn't change his weight. Wonder how he'd take the information that you're wearing about 25 pounds on your torso. Kurama sniggered in amusement. Naruto sentimental smirked back. We'll find out when we're safely back in Konoha and I can hide from him for a couple days. Naruto wanted to live thank you very much and didn't doubt Gemma's ability to kill him and blame another village. Not that he would, but one could never be too careful with powerful shinobi. Hey hey eight. What exactly is this noble's gathering anyways? A pregnant pause ensued at Naruto's question. Ah. A sleepover to build political bonds, hey eight finally managed before coughing again. I I I have to sleep over with a bunch of spoiled brats Naruto demanded. Radio tossed a book to the young Anbu Chunin with a pink cover how to act during sleepovers for noble ladies. This will help, but weren't you taught how to act like a lady for undercover ops? Raido asked. With Naruto's henge he'd be excellent at espionage. Hey eight and Radio noticed the suddenly pale look on Naruto's face and Genma felt the shiver. Never mention that week again. Uh, you okay? Genma looked up a bit concerned. Naruto shivered again. All I'll say is Kuranai Yuhi is far cruller than Ibiki is at times all that tea. He cried. Three sweat drops fell, but they let it go. Soon the group was in front of gold-plated gates, four guards looking stoic at the ninja though, they were disguised as samurai. Genma set Naruto down, getting into character by bowing to the little princesses. But nose in the air Naruto closed a book and snack pack, making them disappear somewhere inside his kimono. Tsubaki sama, I wasn't aware your guards would be samurai. You usually have attendants. And where's your father, dear? An elderly woman with gray hair piled in a tall bun said airily as she daintily made her way outside the gate. Naruto recognized her from the file he'd been given to study over important people. Tsubaki knew this woman was her father's old tutor and friend of the family. Sasam was her name he believed. Bachan. Naruto said giddily in the same manner he imagined the real six-year-old Tsubaki would have. He bowed politely to her, before heading inside next to the hunched, but still regal woman. I came all by myself this time, but the samurai are so weird. One eats senbon like a camel Naruto sent a wink to the now twitching Genma. Hey eight had to cough to cover up a snort while Raido inches away from the senbon user looking to practice on something. Oh. How nice dear I didn't know samurai used senbon Sasam commented, biting her lip nervously. Naruto noticed this instantly, as did the rest of his team. Hey eight gave a look with a clear message. Be on guard. That evening. Naruto was finally getting the hang of the whole court scene. Over the last several hours she greeted dozens of females from high-ranking positions in their rather extravagant nightgowns. Naruto himself wore a loose silk white garment. Underneath the billowy sleeves and loose bottom skirt though were two senbon laced with a new faster acting sleeping poison Anko had taught him after he helped create the summoning scrolls for the Chunin exams. One prick and even a trained ninja would be out within a minute, much less a civilian. Naruto himself only had partial immunity. One thing that confused Naruto was the lack of girls the age of Tsubaki. The age to first attend was six, but the youngest was nine that spoke of the gathering's true purpose. To amass allies and degrade enemies, much like the ninja village's Chunin exams really. Most wouldn't send a six-year-old to date you with the likes of the shallow girls Naruto was greeting and kissing up to. No, best to let the older children take care of it. Then again, most nobles had several daughters, not one lone six-year-old who had the political weight piled on. Tsubaki-chan. I haven't seen you since you were a toddler. Squeal. We simply must hang out tonight. An older girl glomped on Naruto, looking around 15. Wearing a black nightgown that fit to her form, the girl's silver hair and milky blue eyes made her rather exotic, looking for the normally mundane-looking nobles that relied on makeup and clothes to become so beautiful. At the questioning glance she looked sheepish. Sorry, I should introduce myself. I am Hana Tachibana. Your father and mine own the Tachibana Juno Shipping Company and work together in the trading court. That's where he heard the name. Hana Tachibana, only daughter and heiress to her father's side of the company that dominated the shipping market. Oh of course, Hana-san. My father often tells Naruto lies, hoping it was true. 
Hana's eyes darkened slightly but were gone before he could notice. With a grin she pulled Naruto away in a very unrefined manner not like the other nobles. Let's go Tsubaki-chan, we can eat the snacks before they come out of the kitchen. But the gathering Naruto tried. It was now he wished his guards were here. Like most of the others Naruto's team had been put into a bunker-like setting to keep assassination attempts or political by play at bay. The best they could do was have Hate send a shadow clone, along with some of Naruto's henged into the local servants. Apparently the bodyguards would normally be allowed to be in the hallways, but on coincidence that changed this year, the first year the only daughter of Hiroshi Juno, co-owner of the new largest shipping company after Gato fell, was old enough to attend this gathering. It's really just politics. Most of those girls would just slow you down if you associate with them. Oh, here we are. Hana said gleefully as she pushed Naruto into a room with her. The dim light and lack of food was all Naruto needed to know, this wasn't the kitchen and Tsubaki shouldn't trust this Hana person. It got worse when Hana suddenly became a Kinoichi with the same build, but black hair instead of silver. TSK TSK, Tsubaki-chan. Didn't your father ever tell you to not believe everything you hear? And that old woman said you were bright for your age with a smirk the girl walked slowly towards what she believed to be a trembling six-year-old. Too bad for the girl that appeared to be a seduction and infiltration specialist, Chunin level by her chakra Naruto, could now feel once they were alone. He might not be equal to his peers, but he was an Anbu, and the girls in her field couldn't hold a candle to the ones in Naruto's. Don't worry, I won't kill you. No, I'll just give you a little shot. Your father will sign his half of the company over to my client before long, and you'll be back to being a spoiled princess well, as spoiled as a bankrupt girl can be. Why you're a ninja? Naruto squeaked in mock fear, crouching down as if cowed, while fishing for information, he found out that Sasam was in on it, now he just needed a village. The Kinoichi stopped and grinned confidently, a complete change from the menacing presence. Yep. You're looking at a Chunin kid from Sunagakur, the best village in the world. Now hold still and it won't hurt. She moved in with a shot, intent to jab it into the neck. Naruto took the opportunity and stabbed Kinoichi in the arm. Ow. You little but she didn't have a chance to retaliate when he appeared behind her after a Kawarimi with a pillow nearby. With a brutal chop courtesy of his morning training with Guy the girl fell in a heap on the ground. She looked up hatefully as the poison took effect. H how. I didn't sense any chakra. The shape shift he said simply. After she succumbed his eyes turned hard, with the current tense relations between the villages and war inevitable, standing orders from Dragon Sama were for Anbu to kill any possible ninja from other villages that interfered or appeared during the mission. Every last body counted in a siege, after all. Looking at the girl though, who couldn't be more than 14 or 15 Naruto let out a wince. Killing her felt wrong on so many levels. She was weak. Overconfident. Not great at split-second combat. And a ninja. A heavy heart accompanied him, but orders were orders, the village came first. A smooth motion had his holstered kunai from his thigh, and a clean swipe severed the throat, followed by a stab in the heart. The only solace was she felt no pain. My, how brutal of you, Kit. The village comes first though, eh? Even before your own petty humanity. Karama taunted half-heartedly. The fox felt his prisoner's pain even now, but the biting words just spilled out. Shut it, Kurama. There's a mission to complete. Naruto made a shadow clone that was expelled immediately, letting the other clones know what was going on, Hayate would come with a scroll to carry the body in later, as Naruto couldn't transform back now to do it. Back in the ballroom type setting no one noticed Naruto had been gone, and he slipped in in time to see the food arrive. Plastering on a pleasant smile for one of the girl's friends Tsuki from his memory Naruto moved through the night with the grace of a shinobi and blocked Suna Kinoichi from his mind. That night he slipped out of his assigned room with three other girls, a shadow clone taking his place. Transforming back into himself he silently crept through the building. Compared to his training and the trouble of pranking an orange, this was nothing. In the hallways, the couple of guards he came across were easily avoided or through the hypnotism Jinjutsu suddenly needed to go use the restroom, giving Naruto a pass. Hayate had found Sasam within her room and was interrogating her when Naruto arrived. Please stop. Her eyes begged, being unable to make a sound with a gag in her mouth. Naruto nodded to his leader before putting a silencing seal up nobody would hear. Tell me cough before I get serious, Hayate warned he was used to interrogating in the field and her roughed up appearance spoke to his skill. The woman in front of them, still dressed in the noble gowns, was a jonin by the looks of it. Hayate had broken her fingers among other things and looked ready to do anything else needed. With a fervent agreement Hayate released the gag. Who else is here? Do more my other Chunin students besides the one you caught she said quickly, apparently not aware that her student was dead. The other two are disguised as guards on the western wall. Naruto pops a clone he'd summoned earlier, Raido and Genma could take care of them. Contrary to popular belief, masking chakra wasn't that difficult. 
It was quite easy in fact for those in the Suna squad specialty. The trick though was making it seem like you weren't doing it. Do special Jounin, now that they knew what to look for, would be able to sense them without much effort. We're allies. This mission is obviously a failure. Let us go and we we'll leave. The woman begged. Judging by her chakra levels she only made special Jounin probably for seduction skills as she was rather pretty and was employing the helpless card to get out. Statistics showed women who begged were more likely to be released on compassion. After our mission I'm sure he stopped as Naruto had already slit her throat and was cleaning the blade on the woman's shirt. Naruto. There wasn't any need to do that Hey, looked shocked at the 12-year-old's cold actions. Naruto fixed his leader with a blank look as he sealed Kanoichi's body inside another scroll. Hey, senpai I'm sure you Gao senpai and others have told you what Suna is planning. He asked. Every Jonin was aware their ally was almost certainly betraying them soon. And what has Anbu been ordered to do? Yes, but this isn't an Anbu mission. But I am still an Anbu, senpai. Taking out a squad now, no matter how unused to combat they are, will potentially stop a Kanoha shinobi from dying in the future. The blonde admonished. I killed the other one for the same reason. Your clone didn't say anything I thought it was in battle hate whispered. He looked at his temporary subordinate with a mix of respect and avoidance. Like most special Jown and then above hate was not above killing, but seeing Naruto kill so heartlessly was a bit of a wake-up call. Most had put the thought of war to the back of their minds, a nightmare none wanted to think about. Naruto had it at the front. His blonde teammate was a better shinobi, simply because he made the hard choice to help prevent the what-ifs of war. He killed in cold blood today to save his village tomorrow an Anbu agent indeed. Let's go. A clone just dispelled. The two left our combat specialists and took the encounter beyond the walls. Genma and Raido are holding them off, but fighting in the dark and ninjutsu aren't their specialties. With a nod the two shinobi race to help their comrades. Several shunshin later the duo come across the sparks of kunai and senbin clanging against one another in the crescent moonlight. Genma was more of a strategist than fighter, though his weapon's accuracy was top-notch. However, that didn't help as the dark made hitting the Suna ninja difficult, both had wind affinities, to counteract the weapons and the one fighting Genma appeared frighteningly proficient with it. Genma, backup radio. Heid ordered as Naruto's own wind jutsu blocked their wind from cutting the Senban eating man. Got it. Was his curt reply before disappearing towards the sounds of radio further off holding off the other Suna ninja. Naruto had trained with the sickly swordsman by his side multiple times and as such didn't need to speak to know the jutsu the man wanted to use. Without a sound his sword channeled wind chakra. Kano has scum. Prepare to die the black-clad ninja perhaps Kanoichi, but Naruto didn't have the time to care bit out while going through hand seals. Kurama, can I use your eyes? Naruto asked. When he used Kurama's demon eyes his sight became sharper, could see better in the dim lighting at night, and gave off a terrifying appearance. Ha, hey, let's see him piss himself and Naruto's normal cerulean blue transformed into cat-like red slits that glowed in the night. Wind style. Great hurricane, an almost vortex barreled towards the Kanoha side. It met with Naruto's wind-coated blade and shadow clone barrier, cancelling out. Using the distraction Naruto appeared in front of the Suna ninja. Wire, el like Gara. The ninja realized Naruto's blade was cut down. The ninja dodged. Demon. Was his shout as he jumped from tree to tree in a roundabout fashion. Perhaps Naruto shrugged. Shadow clone jutsu and three clones charged with swords. Ha, hey, I'm a wind user, stupid demon. An explosion of air erupted from around him and took out the clones. Where'd you go, coward? Was the frustrated grunt. Naruto had used the momentary distraction to use the headhunter jutsu to go underground. Right here. Naruto snarled under the influence of the slight Kyubi chakra, popping out of the ground below the enemy's feet, sword pointed upwards. A Kawarimi saved the man, reappearing several meters back. Perfect. Dance of the Crescent Moon. Several hate struck the surprised ninja before he could muster a Kawarimi or more wind. One hate struck a leg, another the back. The third impaled my stomach. The man dropped like a log, bleeding out. H how? He said. Naruto looked down a bit sadly as his eyes are with it, the bit of fierceness that came with them disappeared. You focused on one opponent and don't have enough chakra or experience to jump from one attack to the next to avoid me. Hayde explained while coughing from the high speeds he just produced. You were good enough for Chunin, but your cockiness and splitting up while facing Jonin, and a Chunin that was your downfall. Spare my teammates. If you tell me something, Naruto will prompt. The dying man didn't need to know what happened, and Kanoha couldn't keep Suna prisoners without breaking the treaty, something that had to be done carefully, though it did happen. At the man's flinch of being asked for village secrets, Naruto chuckled. No, not village secrets. I just want to know if it's true Gara can fully transform. The spies heard rumors, but any confirmation was appreciated. Yes, and no one can kill him, not even the Kazakiage. His sand has a mind of its own. 
The man spoke quickly even as the gut wound no doubt pulsated with pain. Thank you, Naruto said sincerely and hate stabbed him in the heart. You knew all that, Naruto. Hate said quietly. I know but dying men have less reason to lie. Dragon taught me that. I just made sure I had all the facts straight. With a shrug and sealing of the body the Kanoha shinobi went towards their team. Yo, I take it you two finished up. Genma waved with his own scroll of the body. They take them back to Kanoha for examination and mind walk if possible. Dead bodies were easier to hide than live ones after all. Several days later, Kanoha. You four did well. Those ninja might have been less battle ready, but killing them provided us with potential information. Mouse, excellent at following the standing orders. I know from your report that killing an incapacitated enemy is difficult, but in doing so you gave Kanoha another advantage. Dragon complimented. Naruto puffed up a bit in pride, while the other three looked a mixture of bored and uneasy. Killing defenseless does that weren't against Kanoha was something most normal shinobi didn't need to do in peacetime, and it had been years since Hei did it. Filling every squad that went against you on missions was allowed, but could spark tensions and in turn another war. But they were preparing for war. And even if not, the blonde next to Hei smiling was like his girlfriend. The shadow protectors of the village Anbu. Thank you dragon. I am proud of you as well Naruto, how are you feeling about it? The Hokage asked. He was now confident in Naruto being an Anbu, but doing what he did at such a young age could be stressful. I am. Fine, Hokage-sama. I hated doing it, but the village comes first. We protect from the shadows and take the dirtiness in life to protect the village. I would do it again in a heartbeat Naruto spoke, echoing the words of the commander and other captains. Smiling in pride, the Hokage nodded. And that is admirable. You'll be happy to note the Tachibana noble and his accomplices have been arrested and are being dealt with. Lord Juno thanks you and his promise to hire Kanoha exclusively in the future. That got smiles everywhere. To be assured to be a rich client's first choice meant Kanoha would gain more reputation and higher wages. Finished being debriefed Hade offered to take the group out to a barbeck after they all had a chance to change. Naruto declined and darted off to find his partner after she wasn't in the apartment. I swear I need to learn those tracking seals crew being level 4, this is madness. Naruto mentally screamed two hours later when he still couldn't locate the feline despite numerous stops along the favored hangouts. Finally he spotted Tora being Chaz by a genuine Team Team 10 it looked like. When they lost Tora again Naruto swooped down from a building, scooping his other feline friend up. Gotcha, Tora. His voice stopped any scratching. He looked at the fat kitty in his arms. Now where is Angel? When Tora suddenly looked everywhere but at him his blood chilled. Tora, take me to Angel. Or else I'll never let you in my apartment again and put a tracking seal on you that links to your owner. That got the cat, and she led the unamused Anbu towards the hot springs. What? The? Hell Naruto balked. Jiraiya, his godfather, was spying on the women's side, like normal. What wasn't normal was him sitting on an enlarged angel, struggling to hold the scale up and the sage's body weight. Being the size of a lion did that it seemed. What are you doing, Jiraiya-sama? SHH. Quiet gaki angel, a bit larger please. Good. Naruto looked deadpan. Why is my cat in your seat? Training. Now shush. Angel looked up with a save me expression. Grinning deviously he cupped his mouth. Pervert. There's a pervert. He screamed. Ten Kanoichi screamed and jumped over the wall with towels on. Angel instantly went back to normal and jumped into his arms. While Jiraiya met with a fitting fate the duo discreetly used a shunshun. Aki, you'll pay for that. All my lost research, I should kill you. Jiraiya cried as he sat down to a now Raymond gorging Naruto and fish-eating Angel. AM just kept giving the cat more with stars in her eyes. Please pervert. Besides, if you killed me you couldn't see me do it. This insatisfaction filled Naruto's eyes as a perfect Rasengan came to life. Jiraiya looked gobsmacked. Recovering quickly the man smirked evilly. Ah, my precious student. As you've now mastered that technique, it is my duty to assess you and your partner's skills through an all-out spar. Jiraiya grabbed the now trembling Naruto and Angel and took them away to the training grounds with a wave to the Raymond stand. Why me? Was heard throughout the village. Kanoha Hospital. Ibuto Yakushi couldn't keep the smile off his face as he left his boss's office. As head of both the Anbu and regular hospital, the lead medic had updated files on all the active ninja, in addition to keeping his notes from every council meeting. Kanoha had been lax for years and even now it wasn't uncommon for bits of information to slip through. So they think missing ninja are banding together or are actually working for Kiri or Iwa, heh. My, how convenient, best not tip them off to Orochimaru Sama's pact with Sana then. In the young spy's apartment a certain bandaged man was waiting, a man Kabuto personally hated with a passion after the attempted assassination. Danzo said neutrally. Danzo looked up. To what do I owe this pleasure? Kabuto, just dropping by. 
a certain snake, and I could share a common goal and information if you'd like some help that is. I'm listening. Kabuto said hesitantly. Next day. You call this an advanced storage scroll? Jiraiya mocked his student. Level 3 and sealing was such a milestone because it consisted of not only learning the basics of silencing seals and prisoner scrolls, but expanding on everything, levels 1 and 2 taught. That meant that once mastered one could make storage scrolls any size, not just the fixed amount from level 1 and exploding tags with larger blast radius. After level 3, the next milestone was 6, but at the rate Naruto was going according to Jiraiya at least he'd never get there. Jiraiya-sama, it looks fine, Naruto tried to say calmly. This was the fifth try that appeared perfect, but Jiraiya tossed in the fail pile. You're in Yuzumaki take pride in it. Jiraiya yelled back. In truth Naruto's seals were above average and would pass in the shinobi stores, but Jiraiya wanted perfection so he'd continue to berate his students. Look, just try again and faster. No seal master should need more than 15 seconds for matrices this simplistic. Yes, Jiraiya-sama. Call me sensei Gaki. I'm your sensei. You lost that ride after yesterday's spar Naruto growled as he ran through another attempt. His leg was still fusing itself back together from Jiraiya tossing him into a cliff. You're healed. Almost. And no pain no gain. Whatever, you just wanted a punching bag. DSCH, even so make another one. That try took 22 seconds. As the two continued to banter and throw several more enlarged storage scrolls in a pile, they never noticed Dragon pocketing them. After all, Anbu Budget could always use more storage scrolls, and he'd teach his young subordinate torture resistance or something as payment. By the end of the day Naruto could finally make any size scroll within the time limit, over a hundred had been discarded. Of course when the pair looked over they found the pile empty, much to their confusion. A happy dragon meanwhile was already back in his office with the hall. Two days later at dawn Naruto and Angel were with Jiraiya in the forest of death, nothing but Naruto's sword and several spare explosive tags with him. Jiraiya had snuck into the apartment and dragged him out to the Jinchuriki's least favorite place in the village. Jiraiya-sama, what the hell. My squad comes here often enough already, I hate it here. And that's a problem, Gaki. You're scared of this place. Damn right I am. Naruto cut in without remorse. Angel nodded along, having spent a fair amount of time in the place as well. I won't have my students scared of some measly forest. Your captain will be ready to resume your Jinchuriki training in two days, until then you will stay here with Angel. To make it more interesting if you succeed I'll let you sign the toad contract. All opposition died in both cat and boy's throats, at the promise to sign such a contract was worth more than almost anything. Prepare to have that contract ready for us we'll survive for two days. Naruto declared. Yeah. There's no way we'd be killed here, creepy man. Angel chorused. Eh, but there's not just surviving. You two have to defeat the northeast hive of wasp spiders don't die, okay? And the sage was gone with a cackle. We're going to die, aren't we? Naruto asked as the pair set off. The northeast hive was the largest of the five groups of wasp spiders, and made them up, but that would be horrible if they were real imagine human-sized flying spiders with wasp stingers. Shivers, said to be the size of a grown man with a wasp-like lower body and spider fangs on the front. True monsters, Naruto only fraught a couple at a time in the past, while Anko and him gathered their venom for her more lethal poisons. They weren't particularly deadly alone but in a mass hive. Probably. On the bright side, if we do stay alive, we'll have the venom of over two dozen wasp spiders, enough to make Anko pay for our next Ichiraku feast I'll bet. Angel snorted. Think bigger Naruto I bet she'll finally teach us that really powerful neurotoxin I could coat my claws in it and watch my enemies twitch to death. The hellcat has a demonic laugh. Naruto sweat dropped. You know you scare me sometimes. Up in the trees a clone of Jiraiya used his transparent escape technique, the advanced version of the chameleon jutsu taught to Anbu to observe. He obviously wouldn't let the two actually die, just experience near death in a controlled environment. It would be good practice for the wars to come. Reports showed a possible queen in this hive and nice warm-up for fighting another Jinchuriki. Good luck, my godson. Another pair of eyes followed the young Anbu on his task, and they weren't human. Entrance to the wasp spider cave. Both gulped as the putrid scent permeated from the entrance. Looking at one another the two nod resolutely. Stepping inside Naruto makes four clones to scout ahead, and the real one sends Chakra to his ears, Angel already preparing her claws. However, the clones keep getting taken out by lone bugs. We'll have to go confront them ourselves seeing as clones won't work to draw them out, and I only have a few explosive tags. Naruto was informed that the third group of four met Doom. Not for the first time Naruto contemplated the merits of murdering Jiraiya for his stupidity. Angel bristled. Don't you few Injutsu guys just use blood to write seals, the cat hissed slightly, mostly brought in by fear of the cave. Naruto felt anger and shame fire up. 
Creating seals from blood is level 5. I can't just whip up a bomb from blood yet. HMMPH, some seal master you are. The cat gave her human friend a smirk. Let's just go. Stupid cats and their expectations. Half a mile through the caves and six dead ends later they find it, the main hive. Screech 30 wasp spiders scream at once. Shit. Shadow clone jutsu. Naruto says and 10 clones pop forth as a shield. Retreat. He commanded as the enclosed space spelled certain death. As the pair ran with bursts of chakra Naruto attached his tags to the kunai. Reaching the outside once more, Naruto threw the kunai in the air. Release. And they all exploded at once, creating a cloud of smoke to prevent the buggers from flying too high. What started was a fight for survival, and this time it wasn't a spar, and no team was there to back them up. Dodging a pincer strike Naruto shunshins to avoid a shot of poison. Angel had grown to a panther-sized, already having three of the hive underneath her form. Twelve of the creatures dive bomb him, taking out the clones he'd made. Wind style. Drilling air bullets. Naruto said and six bursts of wind fly outwards, decimating the horde. Take that, you bastards. Idiot. We need them intact somewhat to extract the venom. Angel shouted from nearby. Oh yeah, oops. Kinjutsu it is then. Inside the forest the trees were massive but interconnected, making a shunshin battle with unintelligent bugs not that difficult. The real danger came in their poison, one sting, or thrown glop, and you were paralyzed for days, meaning you died. Even Naruto wasn't immune. Blade met Stinger from one of the larger ones in the trees. Summoning Wind Chakra the Stinger got cut in half, Naruto being careful not to damage the venom sac stored near the upper thorax. Screech was the warning and a Kawarimi with a clone saved him from a three-wasp dive bomb. Now, Angel Attack moves twin death cats. Using Naruto's ability to transform, two hellcats leapt high into the air and pounced on the trio of wasps, tearing through them with claws. Eventually the move would include Jutsu, but for now the claws were enough. Use my power. I don't need it, though there's less than five left. Just take it. Kurama sounded frantic. Worried Naruto drew on having a tail's worth. Paboom. The forest floor exploded with chunks of rock hurtling through the air, a stray one taking out Jiraiya's startled shadow clone. Crap. Angel said cat was flung against a tree. Rising from the dust was a wasp spider half the size of the legendary Gamabuntha. Covering the entire body was a hard shell that not even the tons of earth could impale. That's not good, Naruto muttered as he caught his unconscious partner, Gash's apparent and a broken hind leg guaranteed. A shadow clone appears next to him. Take her to Hana quickly, he ordered. As the clone took off he turned to his opponent, obviously the queen. The wasp spider spurts a volley of the toxin at him. Weaving in and out of the globs a familiar orb forms. Rasengan. He shouts, unable to stay quiet in his rage as red chakra bubbles around his form and eyes slit. It hits a steel hard fang, breaking it off before Naruto is blown off. Using the momentum he bounces back off the tree and barrels through a wing, a known weak spot cutting it in half. Pivoting, he bears his claws at the armored back of the queen, trying to take off. Yakai enhanced claws meet the shell, tearing into it with feral rage though it doesn't penetrate. Another Rasangan grinds into it to create a hole that claws immediately impale the opening. An inhuman scream fills the forest and echoes into the village. Dragon had already activated an Anbu squad the moment he felt the Kyubi chakra burst forward suddenly he knew Jiraiya's idea was foolish when he heard of it not an hour before and they would have words later and quickened his own. Pace at the roar. Eh, take this. Naruto snarled and did a downward slice with jagged wind chakra flowing and cut the beast deep on the thorax. Unfortunately the sword struck the sack and a river of the toxin doused Naruto. Calling off the dying beast's body, unable to move, Naruto passed out as Kurama's chakra went away, hurtling headfirst towards the ground. His sword clambered off to the side. Naruto. Kurama yelled as his chakra faded. When Anbu arrived minutes later though, they didn't find their comrade in a bloody smear on the floor. He wasn't anywhere. No scent led away, or chakra signature to light a path. Anbu agent Mouse had just. Vanished. Search the forest now. Dragon commanded, he himself aiding. Jiraiya poofed next to him. Bam, Gaki did great to take out a queen by himself. Knew he could do it, he was stopped when he looked at Dragon's eye holes boring into him, as if he was an insignificant bug. Leave this forest before I kill you, and I assure you I could as every Anbu would back me up on this. I will deal with your incompetence later. And the Anbu commander was gone, leaving a gulping toad sage behind. Next morning. Naruto groaned, his whole body numb. He couldn't even open his eyes. What happened? You took enough of that creature's venom to kill the boss summons. I don't even know how we're alive as it cut me off from you. It doesn't smell like a hospital. I can't sense any human chakra signatures. No negative intent is directed towards you either. Kurama added. Naruto did a mental take back, unaware that Kurama could do such a thing. 
I'm surprised you're awake so soon, young one. A male voice filled with age spoke somewhere to the side of him. He couldn't move, but found his voice worked. Where am I? He asked the darkness. The voice chuckled good-naturedly. In the tiger and panther territory our healers sucked the poison out before it could absorb into your body. Your tenant took care of the rest. Naruto stiffened at the last part. Calm yourself, I mean you no harm. You said tiger and panther. What does that mean? Tiled, you're in the summoning realm my granddaughter brought you here, impressed with your battle while on her routine patrol of the area. Defeating a queen, even one hindered by the environment and still in her infant stages, is quite a feat. As for what it means. Well, the council is deciding that now. Ibiki-sama, the council made a decision. The boy is deemed worthy. A younger voice cut off Naruto's question. Ah, excellent. What do you? You'll find out when you next awaken. For now, sleep and an overwhelming tiredness took him. Ibiki, known for his jinjutsu that focused on confusing his opponents back in his youth, and still shudder at that word lol, was a rather stern elder. The young feline shifted. The council decided we would fight to the last cat in both clans for the boy. He's been marked as our summoner. Habiki nodded in approval. Good. Anyone who tries anything can answer me. The younger cat shuddered slightly. Nobody wanted to mess with Habiki the Echo Death, even Manda was wary of the unusually small but deadly panther. Twelve hours later. When Naruto awoke again he felt almost normal. Nice to see you're awake again. Habiki said. Naruto looked over. A panther speckled with grey though the size suggested a teenager, stared back. Naruto recognized the voice again. Hibiki? Yes, I. And I'm the one who saved you, Blondie. A rather female voice joined in. Another panther the same size piped up, sitting next to a rather large white tiger. Um. Thank you. Naruto tried. He was still trying to process the situation. As he sat up he realized his shirt and mask were missing. Hibiki noticed. Your torso was soaked through with the queen's toxin they're currently burning in a bonfire. Now, I believe it's time to get down to business. Business? Yes, child, you've become our next summoner. The tiger lifted a banner saying congrats. At Hibiki's praise. Welcome to the clan, I'm Akira and this is Hizoka. He doesn't talk much. Or really at all now that I think about it. The newly named Akira greeted me. Hizoka bowed his head, eyes lazy like a certain cyclops. Oh. Well I was going to sign the toad contract. Too late. We already claimed you just sign your name and blood, Akira said much too cheerfully for Naruto's taste. She reminded him of his Hayuga teammate, and that wasn't a compliment. One Hikaru was enough. Be but I should get a say in this. He cried indigently. A tick appeared on Akira's head. I saved you from an uncool death by falling. You will sign this, and I and Hizoka will be your acquaintances. Or else. The voice was sweet, but Naruto understood the underlying tone all females mastered at an early age, surrender or die. Azoka sat silently and attempted an intimidating gaze but failed miserably. I I'd love to be the Tiger and Panther Clan Summoner. Ha. <laughs> Whipped by every female pathetic. Shut it. Good. Before you go back to your village you need to understand the joint clan's history. Why do I feel like this will be worse than Tenzo's lectures? Naruto muttered. Later, Hokage Tower. The Panthers summoned him in front of the tower hours later in a cloak, Hizoka and Akira next to him. They'd already checked on Angel who'd be released tomorrow morning. Well Naruto, make sure to summon us often. I expect you to let me play at the next poker night you told us about. Akira said. Right. I thought summoners were the boss. Silly. Where did that stupid notion come from? Even Hizoka sweat dropped. Naruto shook his head and waved goodbye. With a gulp he stepped into the tower. Going missing for two days wasn't exactly protocol for both the Jinchuriki and Anbu. There was probably a small panic, he mused. Turned out there was a massive panic in the council room. On his way to the Hokage's office Yuga dropped down in Anbu gear and gave him a crushing hug. Thank god you're okay where were you? Your chakra couldn't be sensed and your scent disappeared. Naruto gasped. Senpai. Need. Oxygen. She let him go and he sighed. Sorry, but I kind of got saved by a summoning clan and. Save it mouse. You're needed in the council chambers. Dragon's voice came from nowhere. Nodding the pair followed the commander. Dragon wouldn't admit it, but he was relieved. If Naruto hadn't shown up when he did, Dragon would have killed the Toad Sage where he sat in the chambers. Most of the clan heads and the elders felt the same way. Dragon couldn't remember a time where the Hokage had to hold himself back so much to keep from killing somebody. As the trio entered re-entered in Dragon's case the Shinobi Council Chambers everyone visibly relaxed, even if Naruto still looked pale and was in a tattered cloak. Jiraiya gave a sheepish grin and wave. Hey Gaki, glad you survived. Nice outfit by the way, very rugged. It came from my summons my shirt and mask were doused in the toxins and I almost died. Three times according to Hibiki-sama. 
Naruto added the last part, and Jiraiya winced. Yeah, sorry. I guess you weren't ready to fight a queen yet, though no harm done, you're alive. He chuckled. Wait summons you're only allowed to sign the toads. I signed the joint tiger and panther contract and there's nothing to be done. They saved me and they're well versed in jinjutsu, medical jutsu and combat, all things I could use. Jiraiya huffed. I've never heard of them. I'll bet they're second rate. Your father would want you to sign his contract and all your contract now. He ordered. Naruto grew a tick mark, but it was the Hokage who snapped. Jiraiya, need I remind you that you're on thin ice. Putting a Jinchuriki in unneeded harm without supervision so close to the village. I had a shadow clone watching. That popped before it had a chance to help. Now, you left him, and his feline companion who isn't ready to fight Genin yet, much less a queen wasp spider, alone without all his equipment or backup. There were plans to deploy two Chunin squads to clear the hive out safely before the exams, and Naruto could have joined in there for experience. But you decided that setting him loose there was an acceptable course of action without informing anyone until after he entered the cave. Gureya, that folly could be called treason by some. And then demanding him to break a sacred bond with a new clan that could benefit Kanoha simply for pride. The clan heads glared daggers at the Sanin. Kanoha had around 10 contracts, and adding an 11th one that was so well balanced would be a boon, especially when Naruto one day took on a student or had a family and passed it to them. Jiraiya had the intelligence to look apologetic. If the Jinchuriki had died, we'd have a Biju to fight on our doorstep within five years, Danzo added. Sorry, it's just his father. Is dead. My father is dead, Jiraiya Sama, and while I enjoy learning from you the same things he did, I am not a carbon copy that you seem to want despite your claims. The Toad contract should go to another worthy Kanoha ninja I can think of several in Anbu already, or you could choose one of the soon-to-be academy graduates. I didn't question you on dropping me in the forest, but from what I just heard I should have. Naruto was disappointed in the man supposed to be his godfather, why had his parents thought the guy would make an acceptable replacement family. Almost killing him for training by having him take an air rank level unofficial mission. Talk about irresponsible. Well said, Naruto. Why don't you tell us exactly what happened in the forest and beyond? Saratobi interlaced his fingers as he said it, hiding the pleased smile. Naruto had willingly told his old student to pick another Kanoha ninja that spoke of his character, as some would try to gain a second contract or just leave the matter to fester. Heh, well it all started when Angel and I were dragged out of bed and given 10 seconds to grab our gear, though Jurei only let me take my sword, some kunai, and a few explosive notes. Speaking of which it was recovered and repaired that last cut cracked the metal hard as it is to believe. Saratobi interjected. Naruto beamed then continued, the council becoming more impressed by the minute. So let me get this straight. The Tiger and Panther clan which merged less than 25 years ago after centuries of bloody conflict that almost wiped them out, but now work side by side in flawless teamwork, saved you from certain death and decided you would be the first summoner since they became one clan. And this was after you beat a queen through luck and circumstance and before that wiped out just about the entire hive of the northeast sector. Saratobi started dryly an hour later. Naruto hadn't dived into the intricate history or abilities of his summons, but that was allowed to protect the summons and summoner from enemies that might uncover the intel. Besides, he already planned to fill in Dragon for the Anbu-only archives all of those files were harder to steal than the Hokage Mountain it seemed. Yes, Hokage-sama. My summons look forward to allying with Konoha, will my familiars insist on joining in the next poker game? Some chuckles echoed at that, but many nodded okay. And Kurama says I'm practically immune to the wasp spiders now, not that I want to test it. Some of the minor clans looked a bit scared at Naruto being on first name basis with the beast, but Saratobi didn't bat an eye. Of course. Take tomorrow off. In two days Tenzo will restart your mastering of your Jinchuriki powers. In the meantime read this scroll before our next meeting, and a thick scroll appeared out of nowhere and bonked the blonde on the head. Not reacting as his commander was next to him and might take offense to him cursing their boss, he bowed before shun shining away. Saratobi then dismissed everyone else but the elders, Dragon, and Jiraiya. Am I still his teacher? Jiraiya asked with some hope. Kaharu slid her eyes over to him, and Danzo wished a man had let someone sign the toad contract he could kill him then. Yes, but. Saratobi stopped the grin on Jiraiya's face. We'll discuss additional punishment, but for now you are to have your sessions with Naruto monitored by either Dragon, Tenzo, myself, or anyone I deem trustworthy. You have no say in what you teach him besides Fuinjutsu though I trust he'll be at least a solid level 4 by the Chunin exams even his mother's Fujutsu that you know. Jiraiya looked indignant. I was going to start him on the hair jutsu this week. No, I won't allow that until this mess with Sauna and Odo is taken care of. 
until then continue to work on his Rasengan I know you can create a quicker, so he can to the 5 element seal, and your transparent escape technique. The Tijutsu training you put him through is useful, but focus on Fuinjutsu, Chakra Control, and Ninjutsu for now. Suritobi put his no-nonsense voice on that Jiraiya hated since his Genin days, causing the S-rank Sanin to meekly agree like he was 6 again and just got schooled for his attitude. Yes, Sensei. Here is an, is it really wise to show Naruto the five element seal? He is a Jinchuriki after all, and the seal is useful to subdue him. Kaharu pointed out. Ah, but he won't be learning the unsealing method yet. Once he masters the entirety of the fox's chakra I'll allow him to know the unseal jutsu. Mollified, the elders gave curt nods. Now Jiraiya, you have a year to pick out a new toad summoner. Saratobi warned. But sensei, Naruto is the child of prophecy, I can feel it. That doesn't mean he needs your summoning contract. I am well aware you view him as an apprentice. If only you'd make it official Jiraiya griped. The Hokage refused to sign off on the paperwork for some reason. Saratobi chuckled a bit. It's not me you have to convince, but his captain and commander. They have say over Naruto as he's an Anbu operative and having an apprenticeship could take away from his duties after the exams. You're the Hokage. You could sign off. But I won't. Jiraiya, I have let you, all of my students, become whiny brats that get slaps on the wrist for major infractions. If you were anyone else tonight you would be at the very least in Ibiki's company. Be grateful that isn't the case. Jiraiya-sama, you will never be Mouse's mentor if you insist on acting like you are with a genin. I spy on your sessions, and you waste precious time joking around and peeping. It's research and I am bonding with my godson. Jiraiya shot back at the man. Dragon looked at him, and even the mask seemed to send a cool expression. You're an instructor first, if you can't maximize your time with him, I will have you write the jutsu on scrolls and let him learn them himself. There are plenty of guard rotations he could fill up. My men are valuable, and wasting his time when the village needs everybody's foolhardy. Saratobi and the elders nodded, Danzo especially agreeing with the Anbu commander. While they still had a too soft handle on the Jinchuriki, the boy was at least progressing reasonably fast. Danzo found himself wondering what could have happened if the boy had always been properly trained so much time wasted for childhood. At least he was a soldier now. Pine. I will find another summoner the toads will accept. Even if he really just wanted to have his toad eat dragon. Next day, in Yuzuka Clinic. Bazing fondly at his partner, Naruto bowed again to Hana. Thank you so much, Hana-san. I know cats are not your favorite this was the third time he thanked her, but still felt it wasn't enough. Angel had a punctured lung that could have killed her had Hana not been a competent vet. It's fine. I told you, it was my pleasure. It's the least I could do, after how you helped me that night, though I didn't expect you of all people to be mouse. Just remember pup, that your feline can't train for a week in bed rest for two days. Be safe, Angel. Don't go fighting wasp spiders anytime soon. Angel didn't answer as the drugs to dull the pain were keeping her under. She wouldn't be answering for at least a day. Well, thanks anyway. And please don't spread it around. The council just found out themselves a while ago I'd rather less figure it out. Of course. Your Anbu identity won't be compromised by me, though if Angel is going to go on missions you'll have to think of something. Naruto winked. Already on it once my few injutsu skills are adequate. The masked boy cradled the cage with a snoozing hellcat as he strolled back into the village. He'd take the rooftops or shunshin, but the jostling could harm her. Putting on a henge while passing an alley, the now black-haired brown-eyed Naruto blended into the crowd. With the slightly dark thought about how a simple henge made him human to the civilians, he clenched his fists and made his way back home. After Angel was set up on the couch with a sunbeam, Naruto made two shadow clones and began to comb through the water jutsu scroll the Hokage hit him with. Huh, moving whirlpools, eh? Creates four defensive whirlpools that can absorb attacks and acts as a barrier. Defensive, A rank. What? I can't even do C ranks without wasting too much chakra until that damn waterfall is controlled. It's in Yuzumaki Jutsu. Your mother used it, it's mainly for few Jutsu users to be given respite while crafting seals, but she managed to make it offensive. Naruto's furry friend yawned at its container. Wow, Kurama. Though you might want to hold off on that one. Instead, read the next one. Kurama offered lazily. Water Wild Wave. C rank, water comes out in a burst from the user's mouth. And it doesn't need a set amount of chakra, the user controls the size. That could work. I'm a wise fox of course it will work. As the real one continued on reading all about his chosen next jutsu to learn his other selves were busy. One clone sat with sealing supplies Dragon had dropped off with a note of make, as many of the expanded exploding tags as you can with these by tomorrow. So far, the number was in the 50s with no sign of running out. The other clone sat opposite counting the money they had saved up. Like most shinobi, Naruto didn't trust banks. 
he could easily rob one, so he had no reason to trust one with his money. Instead he kept them in storage scrolls one in his locker at HQ for missions, one in his apartment, locked under floorboards and traps with the bulk of his money at his captain's place for safekeeping. His gamachan was just pocket change, hardly a dent in his savings from all the missions lately. After he checked on Tenzo and they went over how his battle with all the wasp spiders went, Naruto had requested it back for the afternoon. Now said clone was counting carefully, adding the double air rank pay for his extermination of the hive and payment for letting Anko harvest the poison herself, and whistled at the result. Boss, we have enough to last six months without missions and still go restock our stuff. The real Naruto breathed a sigh of relief at that. He had enough then to pay for more fuinjutsu paper and ink and still have leftovers for new clothes. An improved diet finally resulted in a growth spurt, even if it was a measly inch. His uniform still fit for the most part, and those were free issues though. Knock, knock went to the door. Setting the book down, he leapt over the growing stack of tags and answered the door, surprised when Jiraiya and Dragon were there. Jiraiya-sama, Dragon-sama. He greeted with annoyance, wasn't this supposed to be his day off? Mouskaki they answered simultaneously. Dragon seemed to send daggers at his fellow visitor before taking over. Jiraiya-sama is going to give you a few injutsu lesson as he has free time. I am here to supervise and collect the tags I ordered. Naruto looked from his commander to his tutor bad role model sort of godfather, and realization dawned. You got caught peeping again, didn't you, he deadpanned. Jiraiya looked affronted. It's research. Spell it with me, R-E-S-E-A-R-C-H, research research research. Okage-sama thought since he had so much free time he'd have no trouble continuing your lessons. That, and I threatened to send Guy on him otherwise. An involuntary shudder went up Naruto's spine. As Jiraiya pushed past and went into the apartment Naruto's expression became curious. Guy is on a mission though. I know, but it's too much fun to tell him that Dragon signed back and amusement was obvious. Suppressing a snort, Naruto turned towards his tutor. What are we learning today? His excitement for more fuinjutsu surpassed his need to tease Jiraiya for his cowardice no matter how well-founded. Oh, just how to make those prisoner scrolls you keep hammering for stars formed in Naruto's eyes. Finally, Team Rowe's hard-earned budget wouldn't suffer. Prisoner scrolls the preferred way to transport enemies for incarceration and interrogation across large distances was a combination of a stasis seal and advanced storage seal that would freeze the body's functions for up to a week by running on the user's chakra. Though it used such a small amount that even enemies on their last legs could be sealed and comrades could be put into it too, though the cost prevented that. Each scroll cost a small fortune and could only be used once or twice, depending on the length of stay before it had to be tossed. Yada. He cheered. Jiraiya looked fondly then puzzled. Wait, why are you so interested in this particular seal when it's cumbersome and time-consuming to make? Prisoner scrolls took over 10 minutes to write even for masters, and 30 for those of Naruto's skill level technically a level 3, many just went over the theory of it and didn't bother to create them before level 5. Ever since Odo has bared its fangs Anbu's already meager budget for individual teams has been reduced to fund the preparations for the exams. For the price of one prisoner scroll which may I remind you the Black Ops uses a lot I can make 10 out of Fuinjutsu supplies. Lives could be saved as transporting both injured squad members and clients through enemy territory is dangerous, and sometimes the squad member has to use our suicide technique, as most squads carry one at any time. With me, I can have my clones make enough for each team to have at least three at any time. Jiraiya looked impressed and proud. You'll make a killing off of it I'll bet. He joked though. Naruto shook his head though. No, Hokage-sama will designate enough for my cost of supplies, and I'll be given a C-rank pay for every 30 I make won't be hard with clones. It'll give me experience and help out the core until the budget is back to some normalcy. Using this method could save several agents as they wouldn't have to decide before missions whether more kunai, medical supplies, or expensive, but life-saving seals should be bought. Contrary to civilian thought, each permanent squad, be it a genin team to the top Anbu team, was allotted certain funds from the village each month for supplies. This would theoretically cover the cost of mission-specific supplies and most of the basic gear in theory. However, since the Kaiubi attack the civilian council has gotten more influence over taxes and pricing, making the allotted budget become less and less all-inclusive. More and more ninja were having to dip into their mission pay just to get the needed supplies to survive the various missions outside the village, thus Dragon's plan to use Naruto's ungodly amount of clones to outfit the core in the needed seals. Even if it was only until after all this mess with allies turning traitor with Orochimaru blew over. Not to mention all the one-on-one -on -one training you'll get from me as Payment Dragon pointed out, much to Naruto's horror. The commander chuckled at the ghost white of his subordinate punching bag student. Well that's noble Gaki. 
Now the first thing one must know about prisoner scrolls are the combination ratios of the ink, chakra, and space between each character. Jiraiya began. Naruto took note studiously. As the pair drew on Dragon found himself relegated to the couch with Angel, though the feline was no help and snoozed. Man, if only Hikaru wasn't playing Sensei with Kakashi's brats today I could be catching up on the Icha Icha or sparring with the Hokage. It's I, the things I do for the village. Course, Dragon would stay until the Toad taught Naruto the scroll he couldn't have him attempt to run off after giving a basic explanation after all. Though if Yuinjutsu wasn't so boring to normal people, Dragon might not find attempting to pull his hair out while perusing through a budget report. Aki? Not so much chakra do you want to blow up your table. But Team 7. The Karu was ready to slit his team's throats. Or rather, just Sasuke's. I should be learning jutsu, not stamina exercises. The Ichiha fumed. Hikaru rolled his eyes while Sakura practiced healing bruises on Sai from training. Both ignored their teammate, his attitude had soured worse since Hikaru took over again. Bakashi was due back any day however, and then the Anbu agent would be free for a while. If only the Cyclops would hurry. No. You are not ready loyalty and stability wise for more jutsu and basic skills. Your rival Naruto uses primarily the Shunshin, weapons, and a couple of other jutsu to fight that in his Rasengan, but the brat doesn't need to know that. Continue the basics, apply teamwork, and you'll beat the strongest of opponents Sasuke glowered at him, but resumed the obstacle course they had set up. If he would just prove he wouldn't defect at the first signs of power I and many others would love to teach him scores of jutsu. However, until that day he isn't even allowed to have access to Jinjutsu or Ninjutsu over C rank. Not even his family library gives him them as it's controlled by the Hokage. Let's take a break. Hikaru offered as Sasuke failed the fourth time to finish the course as his anger took over. Just two more days or so. In Chiriki training area, two days later. Naruto lay on the earth, wood blinds covering him while he panted. Skin was slowly regrowing as even the 15 seconds in the four tails equated to his outer skin burning off. Four tails is obviously too much for now. We'll go slow then and build up from the bottom until we figure out why four tails had that violent of a reaction. Tenzo said from his sitting position. Jiraiya was off to the side. Naruto nodded in agreement, but the sage frowned. He could control that much with practice. Jiraiya claimed. It was his idea to make Naruto ask Kurama for more chakra than the one and a half tails he could use at any time without problems. The result. A mini Kayubi Naruto letting off a primal roar and almost ripping Tenzo's throat out. Why can't I control four tails? He asked Kurama. The fox grunted. You haven't passed the next stage. Until then three tails will be your max. What's the next stage? I won't tell you at this point. Kurama growled. Naruto scowled. Why not? You're not ready and you're most definitely not worthy. What do I have to do then? God I'm not sure. Now leave me alone, human. Naruto winced at that slightly, when Kurama went to human he was on his breaking point, only flesh bag or damn human were worse. Deciding to let the fox cool from whatever had him in a bad mood, Naruto turned towards his bickering teachers. And I say that, if I loosen the seal he'd be able to use more tails without the backlash. No. To do so would be foolish, Naruto is my responsibility, and the Hokage wouldn't approve of messing with the seal. Tenzo barked back. He should force the power and will it to him not succumb to its rage. It's not the seal that's at fault, but his resolve I'd say. What would you know? Kishina-sama only accessed a tail's worth of chakra in the most dire of circumstances and Kanoha has never trained another Jinchuriki. Our spies are digging for any information on how Kumo does it, but until then we proceed with caution. Listen, boy, I'm a seal master, so it would be fine. And I'm his captain who says no. Well I'm his godfather. Hardly his family is his squad, not a man who abandoned him. Silence rang out from that last statement. Jiraiya looked as if he was struck, while Tenzo fumed at the man's audacity to suggest tampering with the most complex seal in existence. Naruto takes the silence as his chance to speak. Kurama says I have to pass the next stage, whatever that means. And? What is this next stage? Tenzo prompted. He won't say I'm not worthy yet or something. It's I, three tails in control is still impressive you're almost as fast as Guy, with his weights on using three tails. Four were blinding though I couldn't gauge it. Take the rest of the day to rest, tomorrow we'll start refining your control of the tails. Naruto nodded, then turned to his sort of teacher in pity, the man was trying, he knew it, it's just he kept failing spectacularly. Hey, Jiraiya-sama, want to get something to eat? He asked. Jiraiya looked up hopefully then grinned. Of course, Gaki, fish, my treat. He slings the blonde over his right shoulder. Naruto groaned as his torn muscles and patched skin howled. First though, let's pick up Angel from the apartment. Naruto said. HMPH, okay, but I'm only paying for you too. In the end Naruto's familiars join in as well. 
Hizoka sat lazily, inhaling mass quantities of salmon, while Akira chatted with a still-bandaged angel. I'm telling you, by the time we're through you'll be the strongest hell cat alive. Akira assured the young feline. Angel looked down at her casted leg. I was so weak I couldn't do more than take out a few bugs, while Naruto was left to take care of the queen by himself. Ever since she had woken up and discovered her partner had been left alone, the cat couldn't stand herself and her weakness. I agree you're weak. Angel sputtered at this, and everyone else but Hizoka had dropped jaws. But that's why I'm here. You're looking at the number one assassin panther in my generation, with me by your side you'll be kicking ass and taking names. Trust me. Hizoka rolled his eyes at this but continued to eat. The kitten would learn. Or die trying. Hey though, why are you with Naruto now? I mean, how cats don't normally venture into the human world until they're five or six years old or older, you're only two. Naruto perked his ears at this. He tried fishing information from Angel about her past, but aside from an occasional comparison of customs, he'd yet to uncover a smidgen about his partner. Angel shifted. I it's in the past. Let's just say Kanoha is my first home and leave it at that. Panther and Tiger share a look. Sure thing. Forget I asked. Now tell me. Boxers or briefs. The 180 has Jirei letting out a boisterous laugh while Naruto gaped. Naruto. Oh, he wears Naruto covers Angel's mouth. Keep quiet and we eat sushi tomorrow deal. Angel nods fast in glee. Akira, why do you want to know that anyway? Oh, the clan just wants a complete profile on our summoners for the history books. She says offhandedly. And is my underwear important enough for historical records? Oh yes, the toads parade around everything about their summoners, so we want to do the same next clan's convention. Naruto sweat dropped and Jiraiya interrupted. Clan's convention? Huh? You didn't know? Akira asks in disbelief. Even Naruto looked a bit surprised. He was told about the clan convention before he returned. Well, it's basically where all the different clans that are allied together meet once a year to discuss treaties, world news, and generally brag about whose summoner is the best. So far the blasted toads win because of you, but no more. When we announce we have Naruto as our summoner, all will bow before our greatness. She cackled slightly. Naruto cleared his throat. Jiraiya sama can kill me with a single finger, Akira I think I can't make them bow before you yet. Jiraiya nodded along. No way has Godson could one-up him yet. Details, details. Within a couple of years you'll be the next Sanin, and people will gossip a nod of toads, slugs, or snakes, but of tigers and panthers. Naruto shook his head and let it go as he popped another fish in his mouth. Hakanai. Angel suddenly exclaimed. Kakashi popped in and batted the cat away, who was caught by a glaring Naruto. Senpai, she's injured. He admonished. Kakashi waved his hand. Ma, my hand must have slipped. I hear you defeated a queen wasp spider. Oh, did you adopt more cats? The masked jonin asked tightly. Nope, Kakashi relaxed. They're my summons. Kakashi Senpai, meet Akira the panther and Hizoka the tiger. Kakashi dropped his book. Me, but I wanted you to sign the dog contract. He whispered. Heh, well I was going to sign the toads actually, but Akira kind of threatened me to become the first summoner of the joint clan. Kakashi turned his lone eye and glared at the panther. You stole my chance at a mini-me. He pointed an accusatory finger at her. Akira smirked. And if I did? Watch a gonna do tough guy. She taunted. I'll show you tough, what kind of panther is a pipsqueak? Oh? I'll have you know my pipsqueak status is a family trait. My grandfather was famous for it and his techniques. You wanna fight? Name a time and place. Eyes, can't we just get along? Naruto begged. When they ignored him he banged his masked face on the table. Jiraiya had taken this opportunity to slip out, leaving the bill next to Naruto. Both him and Angel eyed the bill with distaste. Bastard. Let's see how he likes his favorite peeping spot location told to Kurunai-san. Cat and boy smirked at that thought. HMPH, training ground 7, felines and canines. Akira announced. Come Naruto, let's go represent the clan. Be there in half an hour. Kakashi agreed. Naruto groaned and Akira grew a tick mark. Boy. You come willingly or I'll show you the true meaning of pain. Somewhere in rain, a certain Yuzumaki Rinnegan user sneezed. No need. I'll just lose though, Kakashi Senpai outclasses me. He pointed out as they made their way towards the designated place for their little war. Angel relaxed in his arms and would be sitting out for the fight. On their way they run into Hikaru. Tabi Kohai. Kakashi Senpai is finally back. I'm free, free as a bird Hikaru cried. Let's go celebrate with sake and women. One, I'm too young for that stuff. You're legally an adult. Who is technically on call and must stay sober, and I have a spar with Kakashi Senpai in a few minutes. It's cats versus dogs. And where is this spar? Training ground 7. Why? He asked, but his older teammate was off in a shunshun. Right. 
Nice talking to you too. Minutes later, training ground 7. Naruto was a bit shocked when he entered the training grounds to find not only Kakashi stretching, but at least 50 jonin and Anbu around with Hikaru taking bets. Even the Hokage was slipping some money while Jiraiya stood in the middle. Excellent, witnesses to document his defeat Akira says from atop his oka. The tiger didn't show an ounce of enthusiasm for the fight, but then again Naruto suspected a lifetime supply of tuna wouldn't break the facade much. The clearing goes silent moments later. Dragon appears next to Naruto and takes Angel. Winner you're on Konohamaru duty for a month, Dragon threatened. Naruto gulped. Deciding then and there to get serious emotion for the referee. Jiraiya steps forth and avoids Naruto's gaze. If he'd look, he'd have seen the mischievous glint though as the blonde was looking forward to his revenge. This will be an all-out spar, anything but killing and maiming and no Kaiubi chakra or Sharingan. The fight continues until one of the summoners is unable to fight or surrenders. Ready. Kakashi nods and pulls out a book in a bored fashion, while Naruto stays still with multiple kunai in hand. Fight. The fighters shunch and further apart, while Naruto throws the normal kunai near Kakashi, using wind chakra to lengthen their range. They land around in what looks like a miss. Summoning Jutsu. Were the twin phrases, Naruto pumping as much chakra as he could outside of calling the bosses and Kakashi getting his usual pack out. When the smoke settles Kakashi's dogs are growling and ready for battle, and Pakin showed none of his usual easiness. Naruto meanwhile was in the middle of about 10 panthers of various sizes and 5 tigers taller than his chin. The favorite to win is Kakashi Senpai, Dragon Sama Hikaru comments from the sidelines. Dragon eyes his Hyuga subordinate. True, but Mouse will win and thus make me a killing. Hikaru didn't bother to argue, just silently contemplated all the money he was going to make when his Kohai lost. Even Hikaru didn't stand a chance. And again, as he saw Naruto among the massive felines he couldn't shake the feeling his judgment could be wrong. Naruto, why have you summoned the my entire joint assassination force before training with us like planned? Isn't my granddaughter enough? Hibiki questioned as he was in the middle of paperwork when he felt the pull. My apologies, Hibiki-sama, but Akira wants us to beat Kakashi-senpai and his dog summons. I don't stand a chance alone. Naruto explained. Hibiki turned his gaze to the jonin and his dogs. Very well, listen up every cat. Let's show those mutts whose boss all the assembled felines crouch down in his. He whispers the plan to Naruto and the others before raising his voice. Now. Attack. Immediately three of the smaller panthers get in a triangle formation at the center and cast a Jinjutsu, the others darting forward in an interlocking pattern, weaving through the dogs that sprung in a diamond formation. Naruto makes 30 clones who jump towards Kakashi. Ma, Naruto. I thought I taught you better than to jump in so quickly. He mocks while thumbing through his book. With a single hand he dispatches the clones with deadly ease, barely paying attention to the boy. One clone began throwing kunai, which Kakashi flung away while others landed near his feet. You'll have to try harder, I am a jonin after all. Suddenly Kakashi wasn't so confident when three of the kunai strewn around randomly poofed to become three of the tigers. Shit. Why do they know the Kawarimi? He grumbled and whipped through hand signs. Fire style. Fire dragon jutsu and a dragon of flames rises up and roars before it hits the tigers dead on. Naruto's going to kill me. I killed his summons. I thought they'd dodge. Kakashi freaked as he saw the three burn to a crisp. He felt reality warp though, and the tigers became nothing more than wisps of air, with Naruto clones where all the kunai were though Kakashi realized they must have been hinges. Even his dogs were tied up with wire from the tigers and several panthers. This wouldn't have been a problem, except his panther familiar, Akira, clutched his precious pre-release Itcha Itcha from a safe distance with explosive notes attached. The real Naruto stood next with a familiar hand sign poised. Give up, Kakashi Senpai, or your signed copy goes boom, and you'll have to wait a month for the actual book to come out as Jureya Sama gave out the others. The blonde taunted. Kakashi instantly dropped. I concede. Give me back my precious. He demanded as the other Anbu and Jonin sweat dropped. Winner. Naruto and felines. Jureya announced. Now give back his literature. The clearing was silent that Naruto, a rookie, was able to beat the copy ninja, no matter how underhanded. Sure thing. Check your pouch. Naruto suggested as the book disappeared in smoke. Kakashi gaped as he reached inside and did indeed feel his precious safety on his person. You tricked me. He pointed a shaking finger at Naruto, who just gave a victory sign. Why, of course. I am a ninja. You were so cocky that you didn't notice the three cats that hung back to hit you with a jinjutsu that first made you not notice your dogs and a second one that led you to believe my tigers were attacking. The kunai I threw were a mixture of real and hinged shadow clones to throw you off and let down your guard. It worked, as I won. I couldn't knock you out but threatening you into submission. That, I can do. 
Kakashi hugged his book before leaving in an embarrassed manner, glad that guy wasn't there. Tell me we have that on tape. Hikaru announced after the copy ninja left. Anko held a video camera high into the air. Every last second. Sniggers were heard throughout the crowd. Now pay up, Hikaru. I bet on Kakashi losing so where's my money? It was then most ninja realized they'd lost a fair amount of cash, all except Dragon, the Hokage, Anko, and Genma. Denzo, standing off to the side, shook his head as they reacted with various degrees of melancholy. Genma snorts at his fellows. Didn't you guys learn? Never bet against Naruto, it won't end well. Yeah, but he was going against Sharingan freaking Kakashi, how were we supposed to know he'd try something like that one random Jonin cried indignantly. Naruto, who had just finished bowing and thanking his summons, walked over. Oh, I don't know, maybe because I was a master at pranks, and my traps are top-notch. Naruto asked. Shaking his head at the stupidity of them betting on a spar even more so was Akira's insistence on winning he takes Angel from Dragon, who was holding a sack of money. Excellent mouse I won't have to give you Konohamaru duty for a month he praised. Naruto relaxed. Unfortunately, I don't have a punching bag tonight for my workout and you just proved you can take on Kakashi. Let's go. W what? No fair. It was luck I won and I just got through training with my captain. Naruto begged, only for Dragon to wag his finger. Oh? What's this? You volunteer to spar with me every night this week. How kind of you mouse. Naruto got the message and shut up the other Anbu in various degrees of vindictive pleasure after losing money. Then let's go bruises won't form themselves. Meanwhile a certain Sanon was in the doghouse as he and Tenzo were giving reports to the Hokage in his office. Hiraya, I know you're worried about this Akatsuki group, but messing with the seal isn't the answer. Tsuritobi chided, though he himself was tempted to allow it. Kanoha had dark days ahead, and a fully trained Jinchuriki would act as an effective war changer and deterrent, even if most of his time would be spent with his Anbu squad. However messing with a seal not even Jiraiya understood fully would be foolish. Best to wait and see what Naruto and Kurama would agree on while mastering his current output. Denzo, you and Jiraiya will continue Naruto's Jinchuriki training like planned, while the Kumo spy attempts to find out from the Hachibi Jinchuriki about his training. So far he just let slip something about beating your darknesses, but nothing specific. With any luck I'll be able to negative. Yes, Sensei Hokage-sama the duo bowed together and left, leaving Siratobi to his thoughts. He felt a familiar presence, and a man he both trusted and didn't trust hobbled through his door. Danzo, right on time, what's your update? The one-eyed mummy looked grave as he sat down. Orochimaru has agreed to give me the Hokage seat if I agree to pass on council and war intel while holding root back during the invasion. It is as we feared. Suna and Odo are now official allies and will be striking the third stage with their Jinchuriki. I suggest we assassinate the boy now and... No. If Kano has struck first beyond what we're doing and gets caught, we'll be unable to call on new allies, Kumo is meeting with me next week to discuss an alliance against the Suna-Odo plan. But I doubt they'd risk it if they caught a whiff of murdering a Jinchuriki before Suna betrays us officially. Saratobi sighed at his old rival's disappointed look and decided to give him some good news. On the bright side, however, I am assigning Anbu to take out Suna's next shipment of weapons and bring them to us. They rely on the land of birds for their kunai and shuriken of all sizes. Sources claim next week they'll be sending the normal sea rank to escort the caravan. If Kanoha steals their supplies, it will hinder them for the exams. And give Kanoha the needed boost, yes. No survivors will be left either. Since they're preparing for a war their shipment is larger than normal, enough to outfit most of our shinobi. And they say you're going soft, Hiruzen. Tell me, though, is it true Iwa is sending three teams? Danzo asked. It would not end in their favor if Anoki was able to watch the finals. Yes, unfortunately. I abhor having to rely on your route that I ordered disbanded, but I must ask, do you have any route teams capable of preventing Iwa from advancing past the second round? Danzo looked shocked at the blatant request but nodded. I'll have six teams ready, will they also be able to take out the Kiri team that is coming? Yes. I want only Kanoha, Odo, and Suna in the finals, having the two enemy cage where I can monitor them will give us a better chance. Very well then. Here is a mission for Kabuto that will allow him to overhear the Chunin patrol schedule for the exams not that we won't alter it, of course. Sai, thank you old friend. But even if we know everything about my old student schemes, these old bones might not be able to weather the storms ahead. Danzo said nothing and got up, leaving without a glance back. You're right old monkey, we're both frail, but I won't let Kanoha remain weak like it has. After you're gone, the great tree will rise from the ashes. Plans of his betrayal towards both his allies in mind, the warhawk made his way home. However, Saratobi was not blind and knew his rival all too well. Danzo, one way or another you will die after Rachimaru is taken care of. 
I only hope I can be the one to do it. It's the least I can do after my failures. The Hokage took another drag on his pipe and gazed at a certain seal carved on his desk, praying he'd be able to activate it before he died. Of Kabuto. Kabuto Yakushi hadn't survived as a spy for so long without picking up the snippets of intelligence from conversations. That's why on this routine hospital supply run the trader was careful to channel chakra to his ears at all times as he passed groups of Chunin. Ah, Chunin, the village's gossip core. They were known to spread every shred of intelligence amongst their ranks without thinking and were known to let the tongue slip while Kabuto was in hearing range. And to switch the guard rotations. Wasn't the zigzag pattern bad enough? I know, man. Now I have to memorize the figure eight pattern. Damn Chunin exams, why do we have to switch it up for the foreigners? The Budo smirked and continued on his way. Stupid Chunin, now he knew what to ask Danzo or better yet just break into the Chunin archives. No wonder his master wasn't afraid of Kanoha finding out. The Chunin disappeared around the corner before puffing away, revealing two Anbu agents silently congratulating themselves on their way back to HQ. Next morning, Naruto's apartment. Naruto grumbled and winced at his stiff muscles while stumbling to his door that rang at 5 in the morning. If something's not on fire my intruder is dead. Opening the door with a kunai in hand ninja are paranoid after all Naruto blinked at his visitor. Ferret senpai, what a surprise. He said blandly. Ferret was a honey-colored male in his late twenties, known to be a stuck-up, and rarely gave Naruto two glances. To see the masked man shifting uncomfortably in his doorway just didn't sit well with him. Okay, who died? Mouse, I have a favor to ask. Naruto eyed him and let the man in, activating his newly installed Privacy Seals 2.0, his last line of defense against Guy's late night shower operas. The bushy brown man had no sense of key or tone. At 5 in the morning. Yes. It's about my long term mission with the Kurama girl. I was tasked with a mission that requires my use of speed and Jinjutsu. Dragon Sama told me you were village bound for a few more weeks, so babysitting a brat shouldn't be a problem. I'll only be gone a week. Naruto mentally cursed his commander but on the outside just nodded. I take a time to spend the week at the location. Who else is in the details? Ferret visibly relaxed at his willingness. Do medic Nin. The girl stays in her room most of the days and I usually am able to train during her daily medical checkups. Dragon Sama wanted you to have this scroll with the specifics. Naruto accepted the red mission scroll and waved his senpai away. In an annoying swirl of leaves the older Anbu was gone. Damn, why don't more ninjas learn to use Shunshin without telling? Reading the scroll had him snort. So the girl can't use chakra they claim? And she's too sick to run off. Wow, what a boring job. At least Jurei Asama and Tenzo will be stopping by to help me channel Kurama's chakra to single parts of my body. Hey Kurama. The girl we're guarding shares your name. Whatever, leave me be. Hey? What's got you grumpy? HMPH. Why couldn't you be like father? He's like every other human, filled with darkness. He's unworthy of more power. Kurama closed the connection. He was wrong to get his hopes up if Naruto's inability to conquer Four Tails was any indication. No human is without darkness, not since father. Sighing at his tentative friend's mood, Naruto gathered up his gear and overnight supplies. Angel was still sleeping when the blonde sealed up his few injutsu scrolls he still had 50 prisoner scrolls to make. Hey Angel. Time to get up, we have a mission. He prodded his partner who just rolled over. Oh way Naruto. Stupid mission, I can't walk far yet. It's for a week and we'll work on Jinjutsu. She still didn't move. If you don't come, I'll let Hikaru watch you again. That got the cat up and she was already clambering up his leg. With a laugh Naruto picked up his partner, locking his apartment up tight for the week and leaving Hikaru a note to feed his plant and eat his food. If only he knew how to make a cold storage seal for food. Where are we going? The cat asked as Naruto combined shunshin and bursts of speed to make their way towards the mountains. He smirked under his mask. Angel was so curious once she woke up. Dust a private home of a member of the Kurama clan. Angel started drooling. As in the Jinjutsu clan. Yes but her powers are supposedly sealed so don't bug her about it okay. He hardened his voice a bit to get his point across. Angel puffed her cheeks and settled on his shoulders. Got it. Did you bring my tuna salad cans? All 50 of them, Naruto assured her. She preened. Good. At the Kurama place, an hour later. We weren't expecting you for at least another hour or two. I'm Dante and this is Ryo. One of the medic nin greeted me from the house's front room. His fellow ninja Ryo bowed, looking exactly like his associate but with brown eyes, while Dante had black eyes. Oh, sorry, but I'm just quick I guess. I'm Mouse and this is Angel. Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. Dante eyed him. It's been a while since I was in the village. I didn't know there was an Anbu so short or young. 
I'm perfectly able to guard Yakumo Kurama, I assure you Naruto spoke stiffly. Dante blushed in embarrassment. Excuse my rudeness, I'm sure you're more than strong enough. Anyway, let me introduce you to Yakumo, she's in her room. Upstairs Dante knocked on a door with various seals that would let them know who entered and who left. Not hearing a reply, Dante looked apologetic before entering, Naruto close on his heels. Inside was a girl around Naruto's age, painting a picture of Kurana Yuhi with light going through her chest. Slightly uneased he pushed on as he heard his name. And Mouse with his ninja cat will be taking Ferret's place for the week. Yakumo-chan, look at people when they're talking to you please. Yakumo scoffed but complied. She eyed Naruto who was shorter than her. He doesn't look like much. Whatever, another warden in my prison. Yakumo-chan, I assure you he's not a warden. We're here for your own good. Now, why not come outside your room for breakfast? No thanks was her curt reply. I'll start making rounds, Naruto told Dante, whom he pitied. The medic looked embarrassed at the first meeting and nodded. Angel, stay with Yakumo-san and let me know if anything happens. Angel sneers but lets Naruto set her down on a pillow. Um, if you'd like I could help heal her legs some more Dante offered. Naruto grinned beneath his mask. That would be appreciated. Angel, behave. The Hellcat wrinkled her nose again. Pine and Mouse. Walking outside to create a patrol route for him and his clones, Naruto hid his amusement when his chakra-laced ears heard Angel's failed attempts to start a conversation. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.